Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Guestman, coming to you on February 8th, a Thursday night, just two days before the LA Galaxy take on their very first game of the preseason in Southern California. Already played one in Tucson. This is the first time they're at StubHub Center in this preseason, and of course, the first chance for all of us to get an in-person look at the 2018 team after being rebuilt massively in the offseason by Siggy Schmidt and crew. Uh, should be an interesting time as they'll take on New York City FC, and of course, we'll, we'll sort of dive a little bit into that as we get into uh, you know what we should expect from that game, maybe what we shouldn't expect from that game, um, and sort of what progress we expect to see as well. So a lot of that talk will, be, of course, be fun. We have some other topics I want to get on here as well, including my favorite one, which is who is the Galaxy's most important player on the 2018 team? We're going to talk about sort of what our criteria is for that. Um, we'll open up the phone lines whenever we get going through here as soon as we get started after a little bit. But, uh, of course, we're looking for your input. I'm here by myself tonight. Um, I was hoping to have some uh, some other special guests on there. But as it always happens, things fall through. So not an issue. I will tell you, of course, that we will focus a little bit more on the fact that the LA Galaxy, excuse me, the corner of the Galaxy will be hosting our very first open house coming up on February 17th. Uh, we also have t-shirts that are out there in the wind right now that you can purchase as well. We'll cover all that stuff towards the end of the show, uh, including when the scarves are coming. All right. So I hope everybody uh, can sit back and relax and enjoy the show a little bit. Enjoy a Thursday night show as we get ready for an actual game that we get to go to on Saturday, which I don't know. I feel like I've missed my home at StubHub Center. Uh, I'm there an awful lot, and uh, fortunately for us, we will have games uh, a whole bunch of times in a row here. We'll have uh, three Saturdays in a row where the Galaxy will be playing in Southern California, and you'll be able to see them. So I hope everybody uh, has enjoyed their off time because uh, it's about to get real. Everything's about ready to start once again. I wanted to start, of course, with the LA Galaxy schedule for this week. Remember, they came back from Tucson on Monday. They got Tuesday off, and they have been training now on Wednesday, Thursday. We'll train Friday as we're recording on Thursday night, and of course the Saturday game. It's important to note they got two days off, basically the Monday travel day and the Tuesday. Uh, talking to a bunch of the guys, you can hear how exhausting this training was. So the fact that the Galaxy looked as good as they did in the first 30 minutes of that scrimmage on Tucson are in Tucson against Real Salt Lake. Um, the fact that they go 0-0, the fact that they created chances, the fact that they looked like they were playing with energy uh, and fight is, is probably pretty good because uh, from all accounts, uh, the athletic trainers were taking these guys to the wall and back. Um, it, was, uh, it was a real, real test of, I, I think, mental fortitude and, of course, the physical conditioning that they have. And, uh, you know, getting two days off now seems like it's a pretty good deal for them. Uh, two days off and then back to training, obviously, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I know that some season ticket members have been going out and seeing training. There's been open trainings, I believe, Thursday and Friday. So if you're uh, listening to this on Friday, maybe you're on your way to see an open training for the season ticket members. Um, all that had to sort of be worked out with your season ticket rep. rep. Um, so all that stuff is sort of going on, but y you can sort of tell things are, are building. I'll tell you something I saw on Twitter a lot today is people getting their authentic jerseys uh, in the mail from when they ordered them, I believe, at the uh, season ticket uh, or yeah, the season ticket member uh, jersey launch party that was at LA Live. So you're starting to see the jerseys in the wind. You're starting to see, you know, the starting 11s and all the different things that are sort of, you know, building towards this weekend and building towards actually seeing some things here for the uh, for the Galaxy in 2018. So uh, we will, of course, take a look at that New York City FC game uh, coming up on Saturday and give you all the previews and all the fun stuff that you need to know about it. Here's the other thing that I sort of want to get to before we get too far uh, into the weeds as well, is I want to bring up something that maybe doesn't have a direct impact on the LA Galaxy, but I certainly would love, and I mean love, to get your thoughts on this. Uh, this just came out, and our good friend uh, and co-host, Mr. Kevin Baxter, was part of the team writing this particular um, particular article along with uh, writer-journalist uh, Dakota Smith, I believe I'm getting that right, um, talking about how the LA City Council President's Office says Los Angeles itself 
will not, and I repeat, will not be bidding on the 2026 World Cup. That's right. A city um, that has a huge fan base in world soccer. I mean, it's a cultural melting pot here in Los Angeles. You can throw in, of course, the South American, Central American, and and Mexican teams, and the North American teams, all these things that sort of come together. All the transplants that you could get as well, including, you know, Europeans and, and, and Spaniards and from all over the world. Los Angeles has a great mixture of all these people. But the L.A. Sit council, sit council president, all right, the L.A. City Council president says that Los Angeles isn't going to be on that bid list, and this is done. There's no going back from this. Um, Los Angeles will not be hosting a World Cup game in 2026. The largest field ever to take, you know, sort of the, the, the pitch for the World Cup. More teams that have never been involved in the World Cup, and Los Angeles is not going to host one of those. Los Angeles, which, by the way, has ready-made stadiums in 2026 to be able to host these games. Rose Bowl, Coliseum, the brand-new stadium that's going to be built down in Inglewood, which will be open by then. Ready-made stadiums to be able to host. I mean, quite honestly, it wouldn't have surprised me if Los Angeles hosted a final. But the L.A. City president, ah, no, he's not. Nope, done. Not happening. Not happening. He's worried about the financial ramifications. Uh, let's. You know what? The best way for me to do this is to read some of this article. So I apologize for reading. Uh, maybe you'll find my sexy tones uh, soothing and relaxing. And maybe I can get into a side job of uh, doing voiceover work for, uh, for books on tape. Uh, but here it is. Here's the article. I want to read you a little bit of it. It says, Los Angeles will not bid to become a host city for the 2026 World Cup because of concerns about the financial liability of staging events connected to the International Soccer Tournament. An aide to Los Angeles City Council, President Herb Wesson, said Thursday. The decision came as Los Angeles of officials faced a mon- Monday deadline to submit a host city agreement to the United Bid Committee, the three-nation group seeking the event. Wesson spokesperson Vanessa Rodriguez said the councilman was concerned about the proposed agreement with FIFA, the governing body for international soccer. And at the end of the day, this is a quote, at the end of the day, the council president didn't feel that the contract put forth by FIFA would make sound financial sense for the city, Rodriguez said. Final applications to host the World Cup are due in March, and FIFA will pick the winner in June. But a city report released Thursday said FIFA rejected amendments to the host city contract proposed by Los Angeles Convention and Tourism Board, which was helping lead L.A.'s bid. Among the changes sought by the board were alterations to manage risk and liability that may be associated with the bid and hosting requirements. L.A.'s bid was expected to include facilities located in Inglewood and Pasadena, according to the city report, and the World Cup field for 2026 will be a record 48 teams. 60 of the 80 games are expected to be played at cities around the U.S. if it wins. Uh, according, here's, here's, here's some financial stuff. I know. Let's get into some financial stuff. <clears throat> According to a study released Thursday by U.S. Soccer, host cities could receive an economic boost of 90 to $480 million after costs, depending on the number of events in the area. And Los Angeles was thought to be a strong candidate to become a hub city, a site of multiple games, cultural elements, and possibly training camps. Uh, Los Angeles City Councilman Joe Buscaino said Thursday that the city should be hosting World Cup games, including the tournament's final. So Joe Buscaino apparently has his head screwed on straight. Uh, that was an editorial input by me, just in case you were playing along. Uh, I'm disappointed that L.A. is not included in the bid and that we will miss out on tremendous economic benefits, tax revenue, and international promotion the World Cup would bring, Buscaino said. Chief Legislative Analyst Sharon So said the city, host city's contract contained onerous stipulations, including one that potentially required Los Angeles to provide police escorts public transportation, parking, and other city services at events at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. She also said that the contract allowed FIFA to change event requirements at any time, and there were no indemnification provisions in the contract that would protect the city. Yeah, guess what? Here is the bad thing about FIFA, and we certainly have seen it uh, throughout the world whenever they host a World Cup. Anyway, that's a L.A. City Council President office said city won't bid on 2026 World Cup. Kevin Baxter and Dakota Smith uh, writing that. But here's the thing about the World Cup is that basically they come in and say, you're going to pay for everything, and when we make money selling all of uh, all of the stuff that we sell, we get to keep all that money. Oh, and by the way, um, 
we don't get taxed on any of that either. We just get to, we just get to keep the money. Hey, it's a great deal. I love it. And FIFA gets away with it all the time. <clears throat> but thinking Los Angeles could go and put amendments in there was probably pretty boneheaded even to begin with. Um, I understand the fact that FIFA could change the requirements. They absolutely could. We know that World Cups have been boondoggles. You look at the South African uh, World Cup that, that happened and their stadiums that are in mothballs and probably will never be used again. And you look at the one in Brazil and you have stadiums out in the middle of the jungle that will never be used again. That's not what's happening in the United States with the 2026 World Cup bid. For the most part, they're using ready-made stadiums. The United States has always been considered World Cup ready if anybody ever fell through. So if, you know, Qatar eventually falls through because, you know, nobody wants to play a World Cup in winter or, you know, finally all the human rights violations have finally come through. The United States has always been thought to be, hey, if you need to host a tournament in a hurry, send it over to the U.S. because they got all the stadiums. They have all the infrastructure. They can host a World Cup kind of in their sleep. And that's still true. The fact that Los Angeles thinks, one, that the Los Angeles City Council thinks that they are large enough to somehow manhandle FIFA was humorous to begin with. Um, and the fact that they think that this isn't how it's done every single time. Now, I agree. Financial risk is not something you want to you know, just go ahead and wrap your arms around. But this is a World Cup. Los Angeles is a, is a hub for the World Cup. The chances of Los Angeles losing money, one on the Olympics that are uh, you know that they're going after, and I, I think they've been awarded uh, the Olympics or World Cup are pretty slim, pretty slim. So this is this to me is a huge strikeout, and I'll tell you this: it's a huge strikeout for the for the galaxy as well. Because imagine all of the associated possibly revenue with training camps the Galaxy could pull in, hosting events at StubHub Center in terms of uh, training camps and all the extra fields they have. I mean, that should be a boon for the Galaxy um, and AEG. Um, imagine that you could play World Cup warm-ups um, you know, at StubHub Center. Uh, just imagine the fact that there is so much football, soccer, going around at one time that you could advertise the heck out of it and say, hey, and you know, hopefully the United States is in the World Cup, and, uh, and that uh, you, can, you can advertise other players who are in that from the Galaxy, and you can come see them play. I mean, all of the World Cup bump would certainly be there for the for the LA Galaxy and quite honestly LAFC to gobble right up if if Los Angeles was a host city. Okay. And now that's gone. That's gone based upon one city council member sitting there saying that it didn't make financial sense to him because he was worried about the risk. And hey, listen, I mean these are guys who are obviously all over the financial risk issues or not. Usually they're asleep at the wheel. So Tell me again about how Los Angeles, who is basically ready to host a World Cup right now, you want to throw them in next, next weekend, we could probably get something together, uh, won't be hosting the World Cup in 2026. So whenever the United States, which will probably still most likely win the 2026 bid, along with Mexico and Canada, it's a joint bid, and 60 of those 80 games will be played in the United States. Just remember that you here in Los Angeles, your city council thinks that it wasn't a financially responsible thing to do, and so they're out of it. All right? And that hurts the LA Galaxy as well, quite honestly. Um, so all of those things go hand in hand. So, I mean, if you, you think I'm right, you think I'm wrong, are you mad that the, uh, the World Cup is not coming to Los Angeles at all? Not happening. It's going to be in the United States. But does that does that does that make up for it? You can go ahead, give me a call 949-734-4217. The number is on your screen. Uh, if you're listening to our podcast, you can just listen along as we continue continue down this road, but it's still to me this seems like a huge opportunity missed both for Los Angeles and for the Galaxy and again, I'll throw LAFC in there as well, not that that is what we're trying to focus on here. But anybody who is who the the team's most likely to be picked up to, you know to pick up some advantage in this would be LA Galaxy and LAFC having a World Cup final hosted in Los Angeles at a new Inglewood Stadium. So uh, again, if you if you think that I'm right, you can call in too. I mean, I, I don't care. You can agree with me. That's fine too. I just never know how everybody wants to do. You know, you're you're allowed to disagree. That's what I'm saying. So anyway, we will. Okay, cool. See, this is what I like. See, we actually get to talk a little bit, and that is a good thing. All right, uh, 323, who's this? 
Hello, 323. Hello? Yeah. Oh, hey, uh, this is Bobby. Hey, Bobby. What do you got, buddy? Uh, I, don't talk, I just wanted to talk. Uh, we'll give my opinion on the on the, on the the World Cup uh, situation. Yeah, give it, tell me what you, I mean, are you, are you uh, does this feel like a kick in, kick in the gut? Or, you know, is this a smart financial decision? Uh, it makes no sense to me, honestly. Why, why doesn't it make sense? Uh, because the city's basically, I feel like everything that's been going on in the sports landscape in Southern California in the last four to five years has been geared toward building that infrastructure, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Because I feel has. like they've been trying, you know, with 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 the Rams, with with the Chargers, with uh, even LAFC. Um, I feel like it's all coming in at with, at the right time that they wanted to bring it in um, to get the infrastructure there for the Olympics. And to me, to say that you know there's going to be, let's say, some uh, repercussions for hosting a few games for the World Cup. I think it's totally ridiculous. Yeah, Honestly. yeah, you know, you know, Bobby, I, I'm sort of with you on that, and and the the whole problem is it seems like somebody didn't do their homework, or or somebody looked at a piece of paper and made a decision based upon you know very little information on this because uh, it seems like L.A. would be a, a great benefit of this. They again, they're not building stadiums, right, Bobby? I mean, they already have the stadiums, so you're talking about well, provi- they're, providing they're, security yeah, for they're building business. up for other reasons, but yeah, they're they're there. They're there. That's right. The 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 building the the new Rams and and eventually Chargers Stadium that's going in in Inglewood is not being paid for by the city of Los Angeles. They didn't have to pay for that, so so they get to use it. Yeah. Yeah. So all right, Bobby. Anything else? Um, and I might call back when we start talking about the important players. Oh, you get ready. That's fine with me. We'll we'll definitely do that. Thanks, Bobby. We'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. So Bobby, going. Anybody else has any uh, comments, questions? Uh, things that you want to talk about because we're now going to enter that LA Galaxy segment. Um, let's start first with a uh, with a Zlatan update. I know that that's fun. Um, I know that everybody's sort of hanging on the edge of their seats. Hey, uh, okay, here's what we know. Nothing has changed. Um, is that good or bad? <sighs> this is difficult. I-, I can tell you as a reporter, and certainly you heard Kevin Baxter's reservations about even reporting the news that the LA Galaxy were once again chasing off, chasing after Zlatan Ibrahimovic because we have been burned uh, a couple times now. And I think as fans, you've been burned too. So whenever I say, hey, you know, is Zlatan coming? You know, how excited should we be? I mean, there seems to be a real sort of carryover and a push towards this being something real. And I still believe that it is something real. Um, but there are a bunch of landmines that uh, anybody could step on at any point in which it sort of throws everything out the window in terms of Zlatan coming to the LA Galaxy. Um, And really, that's sort of, that's the scary thing that I think everybody sort of needs to look at, all right? Um, You know, verbal agreements, I heard rumors that verbal agreements were made. That's great. Uh, a verbal agreement is a great thing, but you can also change your mind from a verbal agreement. So do I, t- do I take anything from that? No, I don't. Um, you know, do I think Zlatan wants to come to Los Angeles? Yeah, I think he's interested. I think if he wasn't interested, we wouldn't be hearing all of these rumors and all of these different takes on Zlatan coming to the galaxy. And there is another part to this, is that any little inkling of truth, and it could be true that Zlatan is considering the LA Galaxy and that, you know, there's actually something in front of him to talk about, but any of these little inklings of truth really get overreported and really talked about. So uh, let's go to 424. 424, who's this? Hey, Josh, this is Chris. I have uh, quite a bit on my mind regarding the Slotten business. Go ahead, hit me, hit me, Chris. Um, I'm I'm here for you. the The doctor is it, in. It's gonna be it's gonna be kind of loaded. So you know, if 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 you have the time, just just I'm t- gonna go through a little bit of Slotten's past. All right, all right. Just try. Just remember, keep it concise. No swearing. That's all I ask. So tr- do your best. No all right, swearing. Keep it concise. Okay, go for it, Chris. If you go back to Slotten's history. I don't know if you guys are very familiar with his history. It goes back way back. He has had incidents with several teammates where he's actually broken the foot of a teammate, his own teammate. He got in a fight with Oguchi. I don't know if you guys remember this a couple years back and Slatan got a broken rib from that. And these guys were teammates. Mm -hmm. Now, 
you you will also remember that Slatan had a falling out with Pep Guardiola. This is one of the top coaches in the world. Yep. And he couldn't keep and he couldn't keep Slatan's ego under wraps. I mean, what makes you think that he's not, he's not going to come to MLS and he's going to see everyone else as as bugs and insects and he's going to not respect Siggy at all? Right. I don't think the guy's changed overnight. I mean, this is a guy that has had a long history of being a jerk. Yep. Not only to other players and other teams, but to his own teammates and his own coaches. Yep. yep. So, and another thing regarding his injury, so this is a two-parter regarding the injury. This was this was a ligament injury. It totally tore off the bone. This was major. Now, if you look at the doctor reports, a lot of them are saying this is career ending. Now, we don't suggest that he comes back. Right. Especially at his age. So if, if the top doctors in the business working for one of the top clubs in the world using the latest technology and the latest methods to bring him up to speed weren't optimistic and it was proven when he came back, after he came back, I mean, he almost immediately got re-injured right. from the same knee, you know, so... I don't see absolutely any positives other than marketing for a slot on transfer to the LA galaxy and marketing doesn't help us in any way on the field. So I can only see this going really negatively where he comes and he doesn't play because he's injured all the time. Right. Or he comes and he becomes totally cancerous to the locker room. So those are just my takes on the guy and you guys can go back and look at all those incidents and they're very recorded you know, where he's actually broken bones of his own teammates and he's gotten into fist fights, you know? So those right. are, those are my two cents. I, I'd like to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. Chris. Well, I mean, here's, here's what I say is that here's my argument. And this has always been my argument about Zlatan Ibrahimovic is that I like the LA galaxy team as it's constructed now. Um, I have zero issues with it. I like what they did in the off season. I think they brought depth and multiple positions, we're certainly going to talk about that here in a little bit, and multiple players who can play multiple positions and all these wonderful things. And I love the fact that um, they went out and got Ola Kamara, a proven goal scorer, and, and right now, if the LA Galaxy don't get Zlatan Ibrahimovic, they are a, a chance for, they're a playoff team. And so if you're a playoff team, then you have a chance to win an MLS Cup. Um, those, are sort of, those are sort of my thoughts just on the, the general basic team of the LA Galaxy. This is why I don't mind... Zlatan Ibrahimovic coming, even if there's a possibility that his career is over and that he doesn't play anymore. Um, and that's because I like the team as it is. So if he's injured and he can't play, that's fine. Don't care. Bring him on over. Let's see what it is. There's an opportunity cost lost here, Chris. And that's something I think that you always have to sort of put in is what happens if you do nothing? Um, you know, what if you're going to sign Zlatan, you could have signed somebody else. That is always a possibility. So I understand that as well. But here's the thing is that, yes, you're right. There's a lot of negatives that could be there, but there's positives as well. There's positives that perhaps he can come in and he can be a, a player that like he was with Manchester United before. And yes, there's certainly injury concerns. But again, I'm not relying, at least not in my mind, I'm not relying as Zlatan Ibrahimovic to be a starter. And I've never been that. Now, will the Galaxy try to make him a starter? Probably. Um, they probably won't listen to me, and that's fine. And if they do that, I think they're playing with different fire. But I'm okay with bringing them on. There's a core LA Galaxy team that's there right now. They are good enough to compete in Major League Soccer. And quite honestly, they're probably good enough to win an MLS Cup. Too early to say that, but let's watch how they develop. So if you bring Zlatan on, could it ruin everything? We talked about that the last show. Absolutely, it could ruin everything, Chris. But for me, the marketing upside, which, yes, marketing does help you. I know you say it doesn't help you on the field. You're right. It doesn't help you on the field. It does help you in the stands. You're going to need a little bit of that help this year. Um, and so if he can come on, play a super sub role, if he can get some games on occasion, then I'm okay with that. You have to understand it's about expectations and how much money you pay them, and that's the bottom line. It. If you're going to pay him $20 million, then I'm not sure I'm a big fan of it. Uh, if you're going to pay him $1.5 million to sit on the bench, then maybe that makes a little more sense to me. All right? That's sort of my take take on that right. stuff. We, quick rebuttal, Chris, and then I, I got to move on. One last thing. Um, yeah. There was a, an article recently posted by uh, uh, LA Galaxy Confidential from uh, Express in the UK. Um, basically, Slatan's already having trouble with Sanchez, according to this article. 
Um, it's, and it's regarding his wages and, you know, why is he getting paid more than me? And, uh, you know, they even interviewed Mourinho and he was like, you know what, at this point, it's gonna, I can foresee a lot of tension happening here. So we're going to try to offload slot on sooner rather than later. So that's another example. You know, if he's already clashing with a guy who just joined the team, he, well, you know, over he's, wages. He's he's a competitor, Chris, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. But I appreciate the call. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else who's trying to call in, uh, I j- keep trying back here. But he's a competitor. Zlatan has never been happy playing second fiddle, and I don't know that he'd be happy in Los Angeles playing second fiddle. All right, but that's the role that he needs to play. If he wants to play soccer anymore, he's not playing for Manchester United anymore. Okay, he's not. He's done. That's it. He's third in the depth chart. He's not having it. I don't care if he's healthy right now. He's third in the depth chart. All right, that's bo- bottom line. So bring in Zlatan. Bring him in. Let him play. If he wants to play, because he doesn't have many options anymore. All right, this is it. This is the last move of his career. If he's coming to the Galaxy, no mas after this. Maybe he goes back and plays in Sweden one more time. Who knows? I mean, maybe that's maybe that's the adios. You know, David Beckham played after the Yellow Galaxy. I know not a lot of people remember that either. Let him do what he wants. He's a competitor. He's an ultra competitor. There have been many very, very, very good world-class athletes who absolutely hate other people on their team but figure out a way to get it going, all right? Uh, I was talking to my dad about some golfers, some old-time golfers who said that they wouldn't even play golf if they weren't playing, you know, betting money on the side and doing the whole thing, and that I think it was Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer would literally, if you played him for money, that he would chase you out to the car to make sure that you, he paid you that money, all right? So, so, I mean, there's these guys. Everybody's ultra-competitive. Michael Jordan used to bet on golf like crazy. Uh, I know a lot of my examples are golf. I worked at a golf course in college, did the whole thing. All of these things are fine. Zlatan could come to the LA Galaxy. And in fact, the LA Galaxy should try to sign him. All right? They should try to absolutely sign him. Um, so, But we, ha- we don't know anything. Zlatan could decide at the drop of a hat that he's going to go somewhere else. And that's something that the Galaxy have to deal with right now. They have to understand that they are playing with a man who can switch his mind by snapping his fingers and go in a completely different direction. And that it's not done until it's done, until you sign your name on the bottom. Right? There's plenty of negatives. That's fine. Go look at all the negatives. But look at the upside of the positives. All right? Is Zlatan enough to get you over the hump in the playoffs? Is he enough to get you to an MLS Cup? If he's a sub coming off the bench, I'd say yes. Again... People gave me so much crap. He's a rich man's Alan Gordon right now. All right? In fact, Alan Gordon's probably more mobile because he has more knees. All right? And anybody thinking that Zlatan's going to come in and just sort of like boss MLS around, uh, don't realize that the man is aging quickly. He, he, we, everybody thought he was untouchable. He's not. All right? The gray hairs are starting to show. The lion is starting to die. And that's okay for the LA Galaxy to still go out and get him. Because in L.A., his name alone fills up that stadium. And if his name alone fills up that stadium, I don't care if he's sitting on the end of the bench. 27,000 people in that stadium makes that place a lot of fun. And Zlatan coming off the bench. Can you, can, do you guys get, like, see, I understand. I know what reactions. I would get little, little chills. I would get chills to see Zlatan stands up. The L.A. Galaxy are tied going into the, uh, into the 81st minute. Zlatan stands up, starts stretching down at the bottom. He's back. He, he comes. He walks up to the scorecard. The scorecard comes up, shows his number. The whole entire stadium stands up and claps. He comes in, set piece, goal. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Played nine minutes. Changed the face of the game. Plays 20 minutes at the end of the game. Comes out, signs autographs, tips his hat, does the whole thing, launches Zlatan the movie. Right? You have to understand that for $1.5 million, if that's what it is, and we've talked that perhaps that changes, and maybe it moves to summer. Maybe the whole transfer moves to the summer because Zlatan wants to still get paid by Manchester United, uh, and he doesn't want to come to the league until summertime, until it's all over. Maybe he gets to sit on the bench for a Champions League game. There's a lot of, lot of crazy stuff. I mean, y- you can do it. I- am I in love with the thought of Zlatan and Ibrahimovic coming to the Alley Galaxy? Absolutely. Is it a little emotional? When you think about it that way, yeah, there is. There's some emotion in that. But there's also business sense, and there's also gamesmanship that comes along with that as well. And I think Siggy Schmidt can handle it. 
If not, you don't play Zlatan. You send him on a you send him on a plane and tell him you'll pay him the one point five million dollars. Send him over. Don't care. But you gotta go after him. You gotta try. You gotta try to land him. And I don't even think Siggy Schmidt wants him. Tell you right now, I don't think he wants him. Siggy likes his team. I like Siggy. I think Siggy's doing the right thing with this team. But mm, doesn't matter. If you have a chance to get Zlatan, you get him. That's your Zlatan update. I wish I should have some cool music or something that's like dun da 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 dun da 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 you know, like the, the whole thing. Um it, w- it would be fun we could do a Zlatan update, like a little news ticker thing. I don't know. It's crazy things that go in my mind when there are no soccer games being played. We got one last Saturday. I want to see one this Saturday. I will be out at that game, by the way. Just letting you know. Just letting you know. Uh, here we go. Update. The LA Galaxy versus New York City FC. This game is on Saturday, February 10th at 7 p.m. and will be streamed live on LAGalaxy.com. This is not an excuse for you not to be at the game, however. So I expect you to be at the game. Okay? Good. Glad we cleared that up. I will be there. If you see me, I might have a sticker for you. All right? And if not, then you can come to the Corner of the Galaxy Open House, which is on February 17th. I will still talk about that. All right? But the LA Galaxy facing off against New York City FC. Um, I talked to uh, to Davi Villa over the, uh, over, the, over the break at the MLS uh, media day. That was fun. He seems like a cool guy. I really like him. Um, so there's, there's, listen, this New York City FC team apparently is going to be a very deep, uh, very good team this year from everybody that I've read and heard. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Let's go to the telephone lines, though. 424, who's this? 424. Hello? Yep. Yeah, what's up? How's it going? Hey, who's this? This is Jimmy. Nice to meet you. I just wanted to say an uh, awesome show, and I had a little opinion about Slotan. Oh, bring it, Jimmy. Let's go. What do you got? All right, so first I just wanted to say um, I completely get that he would be you know, a great name to have, definitely, for the club. But um, just, just in my opinion, I think just kind of how you explained um, just like how it would be more of an emotional aspect to bring him. And, like, I mean, of course, the marketing side helps and definitely um, to get more shirts, you know, sold and more money for the club as well. But, I don't know, in my opinion, I would rather have a guy that maybe 25, 26-year-old South American guy that just wants to come here and fight for the shirt, that wants to come over here and fight for every ball. Because I think Zlatan, yes, he's a great player, but is he going to fight for every single ball? Is he going to fight for the shirt? Is he going to fight for the club? Is he going to fight for his teammates? And I think that's one thing that Siggy Schmidt is really bringing on this year, that guys that want to play, not for the, I mean, of course for the club, but that guys that want to play for one another. And I think that's how we're going to build this team and this team's going to be you know, have an awesome season. Here's here's my counter to that, Jimmy. I love it. I, I listen from from a footballing standpoint. You're 100 percent right, um, and that's that's always the right way to go. You're never going to be wrong that way. Which is, you know, find the guys who want to play, find the guys who want to fight for it, find the guys who are the you know the diamonds in the rough from South America, find the the up and coming names, uh, you know, from Central America. Get these guys into the team. Here's the problem, though, that that team will be playing in front of 19,000 people at StubHub Center. Right, and that's that's even if they're that's even if they're really good, okay. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, definitely. They they could w- they could almost win MLS Cup, and you couldn't get more than maybe twenty two thousand people at StubHub Center on a non Saturday night. Saturday night games do very well, but th- this is the problem, and this is the problem right now is that you're going up against a team, and and we've talked about this many times, and maybe it's unfair to always have this paradigm in there, and I'm sure there's people who hate every time I bring it in, but there's it's a new shift now. You have to go up against LAFC. LAFC has twenty two thousand yeah. seat stadium. And it's not very hard for them to sell out 22,000 seats. It's going to be easy. They're going to do it for the next two or three years, right? Um, Exactly. It's important for the Galaxy to do one of two things, which is, one, have a bunch of sellouts in 2018, um, sell out the stadium, and that means 25,000-plus sellouts, and also to average a higher attendance than LAFC does because they have the added advantage that they have a bigger stadium so the LA Galaxy could technically not sell out any games this year and still average more fans than LAFC does and those are going to be important metrics to see one how many people defected to LAFC and two how excited the fan base is about each of these teams because you know LAFC you know their fan base is going to be excited one they haven't had a quote unquote haven't had a team uh, for a while Mm -hmm. So they're going to be excited and motivated. And so that's why, in my Definitely. mind, you go out there and you get somebody who puts butts in the seats. I like the team how definitely. it is. I like the team how yeah, it is. Yeah, no, definitely. So, and then I had a quick question. Do yeah. you know, um, I know you guys were talking about, I think, I'm not sure if it was a South, uh, I believe it was some South American guy that had some like knee issues, but he was still kind of young. 
Yeah. Uh, um, do you know if we're still going after that guy, or are we kind of kind of sold on Slatan from what it sounds? Well, first of all, I don't know how the LA Galaxy. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I don't remember the guy's name. I'm actually going to try to look it up while I'm talking to you. Um, so I'll, I'll stall and, and act like I'm smart here for a couple minutes. But um, sure. uh, no, I, so no, I don't think the Galaxy are going after him. And this was after basically this was a loan deal at one point um, that the LA Galaxy were going to uh, try and sign this guy. And if I can scroll down to the bottom of the rumor tracker here, trade tracker, Zlatan, there's defender, Michael Stryker, Rodrigo Aguirre is the, uh, is the guy. So uh, rumors okay. were that the LA Galaxy were going after the 23-year-old Uruguayan striker, Rodrigo Aguirre. And uh, apparently uh, there was going to be a loan involved for anywhere between 300000 500000 They're not, it, it, I've heard nothing about him he's fallen off the radar at this point at this point if i haven't heard any more about him jimmy it's probably that it's deal's probably, probably dead yeah and okay yeah and i just want to say definitely one more thing um i'm really excited for ola camara and for gio dos santos this year i'm pretty sure they're gonna both and i mean jonathan santos i'm pretty sure he's gonna push his brother to do more and i'm pretty sure those two guys are gonna be very exciting to watch this year i'm pretty sure those guys are gonna get along awesome. just just fine awesome jimmy well thanks for the call buddy i appreciate it all right no problem. Thank you. All right. There goes Jimmy. Good call. Thank you. Made me feel good about myself. Even when he disagreed with me, he still made me feel good about myself. I bet he has a wonderful girlfriend who loves him very much because he's able to just sweet talk her. He, I mean, he could get a date out of me right now. I'll be honest. But anyway, no, getting back to the, you know, the, the whole thing, Giovanni Dos Santos better have a good season this year. Um, otherwise, I think he's on a, a, on a slow boat to mm, eh, eh. Mexico, probably. He'll probably end up Mexico. That seems like the most likely destination for him. Um, all right, let's get to the LA Galaxy. We talked a little about New York City FC. Games at 7 p.m. If you're there, I'll probably have stickers, blah, 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 blah. Say hi to me. I get there early, two hours before kickoff. I'm in the press box. Meet me at halftime. Halftime. Top of section 108 at the bottom of the press box stairs. You can almost catch me there all the time. Um, so definitely, I'll, I'll say hi to everybody. But anyway... That game, New York City FC is supposed to be good. What should we expect from that game? This is what you should, should expect. Probably not much change from last weekend's game. Uh, there's probably a pretty good idea that possibly um, they're going to play 30, 30, and 30 again with the three teams and the 35 or 33 players that they uh, played during that time. And that's fine. Um, we're not at the stage yet where I think the progression starts. Perhaps against San Jose, you get the starters going 45 minutes. All right. So you're sort of coming in there now to the point where, yes, the fitness is built up. But remember, only three days of training this year, or this week, uh, with uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So there's recovery involved from the stressful, you know, travel back and forth, all of these things that sort of happen. So expect 30, 30, and 30 again. You want to see progression in link ups and passing. Those are important things. What does that first team do? Working Ola Kamara into their passing sequences. That's important. Remember against uh, Real Salt Lake, very little of that. All right. And again, you're going to get that from Ola. He's the odd man out. Everybody else around him has played together. Okay. So Ola Kamara needs to fit his way in now. That's what you're looking for. Ola Kamara being able to slide in there and start combining with Alison Drini, with uh, Gio Dos Santos, with Jonathan Dos Santos, you know, with Ima Boateng. And it's still Boateng on the outside right now. Um, that probably doesn't change anytime soon. Um, but that's where we are right now with this team. So that's what you want to see. See those 30 minutes. Take them. Absorb them. See if Siggy makes any changes. Is Daniel Stare still a starter on that first team? Is Ima Boateng still a starter on the first team? All these things you got to keep an eye on for that probably first 30 minutes. Maybe it's 40 minutes. Maybe they go 40 minutes, 40 minutes, and you know the last guys get 10 minutes. All right, all those things are, are, are going to be different. Just watch how the players react to each other. Watch how the defense regroups whenever they scramble. These are things that you have to watch in preseason games. Does the score matter? No. And quite honestly, if you're looking at it, LA Galaxy has a bunch of new players. They probably get beat by New York City FC. But New York City FC is also playing a game against LAFC the day before. Probably a split squad type of thing. Don't take it too seriously. Don't take anything. If the Galaxy win, be happy. Be like, hey, yeah, they won. That's great. Don't go getting in a fight over a preseason game, though. Especially with LAFC playing beforehand. Oh, all right. So that's what it is. Now I want to get to the fun part. 
I think it's the fun part. This is the part I've been thinking about in my head. And so for the last 20 minutes, I'm taking your phone calls, 949-734-4217, on who the LA Galaxy's best slash most important player is. And what does that mean? What does it mean to be the most important player on the team? Here is a great criteria. Which one player on the field has the biggest drop-off to their replacement? So if you're going to take one guy off the field and you have to bring somebody else in to replace that person, where's the biggest drop? Is it David Bingham? This is, a, this, this is important. David Bingham, you saw Brian Silvestri play in the second 30 minutes. Didn't look great. Is the biggest drop-off between Bingham and Silvestri? Is the biggest drop-off on the right-hand side at defense? If Felcher goes down, which we assume he's the starter right now, you know, is uh, is Emra Clementa, is he the guy who's going to fit in there? And is that a big enough drop-off, or is there not enough drop-off? Quite honestly, it doesn't feel like there's a drop-off. Or we haven't seen enough. Is it Ola Kamara? I mean, listen, guys, I, I need good, good answers here. I don't need, you know, oh, it's it's Giovanni Dos Santos because he's the number 10. Or it's blah, blah, blah. You have to, you're going to have to back it up. Let's go to the uh, phone lines. 323, who's this? All right, this is Bobby again, Gasman. Gotcha, Bobby. What do you got? Okay, so your most who is the most important player? You heard me talking about it. It can't just be, oh, it's this person. You gotta give me a reason. So who's the galaxy's most important player? Okay. For this year, it's Kamara. What why? Because I feel that we haven't had a player, a proper player, uh, in that position for a while now since Keen left. So I feel like since then we haven't had a player that I wouldn't say can replace him, but play kind of what his role was just to score goals, just put him up there and, you know? Yeah, and Keane was even a different player than Kamara is. I mean, you have to go back a little while to, I mean, Alan Gordon was probably your truest number nine the Galaxy have had in a while. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, Keane wasn't really a nine. Um, yeah, I, I'm just saying as a, as in like he was the one scoring goals. He made yep. he did more than that, but I mean like as a as our goal scorer, I feel like we haven't had a player like that in 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 a while. Bobby, here's and Keen is the last person. Here's why you you might be right, and and I say might is because if you look at Ola Kamara, let's say God forbid Ola Kamara gets hurt, okay, who goes in to replace him at that position? Is it Lassiter? Is it Jameson? Do you move Allison Drini uh-huh. up? And you put somebody else on the right hand side. Is Allison Dreen? He's not really a nine, but I guess you could play him up there. Do you move Giovanni Dos Santos up? What happens if Ola Kamara gets hurt for the LA Galaxy? The, the same thing that happened when Keen would get hurt. We wouldn't we wouldn't have a a person to back them up properly. Yeah, yeah. It is. Uh, it, it certainly seems that way. All right, Bobby. Anything else? Uh, that's it. That's it for today. Thanks, Bobby. Appreciate it, buddy. All right, there goes Bobby. Uh, out there, you can also get in on this nine four nine seven three four four two one seven. I gotta be. Uh, 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 this is gonna be. Uh, this is gonna be interesting. Uh, let's see. I think we got another call. Let's see if uh, if anybody disagrees or agrees. Three two three. Who's this? Hey, uh, hey, guess man. It's Danny from Downey. Danny from Downey. Danny, thanks for calling in, buddy. What do you got? Who is the LA Galaxy's most important player in this twenty eighteen season? Um. I kind of feel like it has like it has to be a uh, kitchen. Kitchen. Ooh, I like this. Okay, so why Perry Kitchen? You heard me sort of give you the 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 basis for for evaluating some of this. Why Perry Kitchen? Uh, you know, I just feel last year uh, we did not have a proper number six to do all of the dirty work and stay in front of the defense mm-hmm. and not leave the defense stranded like it was last year. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, it, it makes sense. Here's the thing, though. If Kitchen gets hurt, who comes in to fill in for him? Yeah, and I also feel like uh, there's also going to be a lot less goals conceded uh, with the numbers, proper number six now, and I also feel like he contributes a lot to the offense because he'll, one, he'll play it uh, simple, and he'll get it started quickly. Yeah, he, he very well could. Awesome, Danny. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it, buddy. All right, thanks. All right, there goes Danny. Uh, anybody else? Perry Kitchen. Here's my argument against Perry Kitchen, by the way. And Danny, you might you might not be wrong. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying you're wrong. You're wrong. You're not saying you're wrong. Um, and I appreciate the call seriously. Uh, here's why it might not be Kitchen because you have Servando Carrasco. All right, because you have Servando Carrasco. Granted, 
Is it a drop-off from Perry Kitchen? Absolutely. Definitely a drop-off from Perry Kitchen. But is it a huge drop-off? Eh. Who impacts the LA Galaxy's lineup the most if he's not there? I'll be honest. Giovanni Dos Santos being gone kind of puts a hole there. Granted, he's not the most important player, and he's not in my mind if he got really good. But what kind? who else would you play underneath? Or would you go to two strikers up top? Would you play them side by side and have two nines basically stretching the field? I don't know. It's a question. I mean, there's nobody technically to replace, in my mind, where Giovanni Dos Santos plays, but that's because Giovanni Dos Santos doesn't really play anywhere, and he plays everywhere at the same time. There's an interchange that should happen this year, which will be fun to see if it does. But there should be an interchange between at, eventually between Sebastian Legette. Giovanni Dos Santos and Roman Alessandrini. And those three players should be able to interchange and move into each other's positions fluidly and dynamically and really confuse defenses with Ola Kamara trying to stretch the back line as well. I mean, if you're looking in your mind at what is a good thing that happens, here's, here's how it goes. It is that those three being attackers is, is a huge, huge advantage for the Galaxy. Now, listen, I'm going to... Hey, for, for those of you listening on the podcast, you'll you'll miss out a little bit on this. That's okay. Uh, if you're watching the live show or you're watching the replay, you can see this. But I'm basically bringing up uh, two lineups for the LA Galaxy, and, and everybody can see those right now. Now, there's only one difference between these two. Um, but in my mind, it, it kind of changes the way the LA Galaxy lined up. The one difference is that on the left wing uh, is Emmanuel Boateng, and that's probably how this starts in 2018, okay? Emmanuel Boateng is probably going to be that starter as they work Sebastian Legette back into game fitness, back into game speed, and trusting his uh, his foot and all those things. So that's the thing. Here is where I disagree with most people, though. Most people have the LA Galaxy sort of playing in a 4-2-3-1, and the three are going to be, you know, Boateng, Giovanni Dos Santos, and Alison Drini, or Legette, Giovanni Dos Santos and Alison Draney, and they want to play Jonathan Dos Santos and Perry Kitchen next to each other in the back. But here's the thing. Perry Kitchen is always going to stay behind Jonathan Dos Santos. That's sort of the way that they're going to play, unless they start seesawing back and forth, unless just Jonathan Dos Santos wants to play more of the defensive role. But that is Kitchen's role right now. So I disagree with saying that the Galaxy are going to play a 4-2-3-1, the two being Jonathan Dos Santos and Perry Kitchen. I think the midfield plays more like a diamond, but it's a diamond that's pressed up the field because the four players that are should combine the most into the attacking zone are going to be legit, are going to be Giovanni Dos Santos, are going to be Jonathan Dos Santos, and going to be Ramon Alessandrini. And Perry Kitchen is going to sit back and be Nigel de Jong. All right? He's going to sit back there and be that defensive guy that allows Jonathan Dos Santos to get forward. That doesn't mean Kitchen doesn't start things back there, but in my mind, because Kitchen's always going to be staying behind Jonathan Dos Santos, it's not a two. All right. Now you can group. Listen, you. I can move like one player on this, and all of a sudden it becomes that exact formation, which is the four-two-three-one. But for me, Kitchen is that central defensive midfielder that everybody's sort of been waiting for, and so here is exactly the way it was: is is that that Kitchen is going to stay back. He's going to sit in front of those back four like Nigel De Jong did, and he's not going to get into the attack on very much on, on a regular basis. He may start attacks from the midfield. But that's where he's going to sit. And if Kitchen goes out, you have somebody like Servando Carrasco who can come in. So that's good depth there. Kamara seems to be the biggest drop-off unless you want to take Allison Drini and put him up there and he's going to be your striker. Eh, not a great idea. Don't love it. Are you going to put Boateng up there if Legit is in? No, that's not a great idea either. Don't like that either. If you put Bradford Jamison up there, the drop-off is big. So these things are happening. They're, you can see the drop-off. I have to agree that I think Ola Kamara is the most important player on the LA Galaxy right now, all right? And and that's just, that's the way it is. That's how we're going to have to deal with it right now as the LA Galaxy sort of, you know, get, get understand that there's no depth there or they have to develop the depth up there underneath Ola Kamara. All right, 323, who's this? 323, who's this? Hello? Yeah, can you hear us? What what do you got? Oh, yeah, um, I actually believe it's actually cool. Ooh, it's Ashley Cole. Why do you think Ashley Cole is the most... I'm, I, and I have a good counter for you, so I don't want to lead you into a trap. But go ahead. Tell me why you think it's Ashley Cole. Um, I believe it's Ashley Cole because he's our backbone. He's going to be our captain this year. On, just, just by seeing who's on the field, I believe Ashley Cole is our captain this year. He's our backbone. And if he goes down, I feel that the back's going to get stranded without him. It could. 
the back could get stranded without him. But here's what happens if Ashley Cole goes down, which, by the way, everybody should expect to happen this year, unfortunately. I know that's bad news, and you shouldn't say it, but Ashley Cole's 37 years old. He's 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 sort of pushing the limit. So if, if slash, when he goes down, they're going to probably move Shelvick over to the left-hand side, and Shelvick is actually a pretty good left back. So I'm okay with that. Then what happens in the center is that you either bring Romney or you bring Siani in if Steris is the starter. Again, not hor- horrible, and possibly even, you know, Tomas uh, Hilliard Arce could fill in as well. He's apparently a pretty good center back. They have a bunch of cover at center back. I agree with you in terms of leadership because Ashley Cole is going to be the leader, and you can tell that he wants to be the leader and he wants to be with the LA Galaxy right now. Um, and he is an unbelievable human being, and the Galaxy are lucky to have him. Um, but in terms of on the field stuff, for me, a lot of his stuff is off the field and on the field. He's a very good player, but. I will say that I think that the Galaxy have cover on that left back role. So him going out, uh, him taking a rest, taking a break, however he wants to do it throughout this year, manage his minutes, however it goes, uh, is not the end of the LA Galaxy like perhaps Ola Kamara is if he doesn't show up. Anything any, that, yeah. Anything else? Do you want to argue with me? You want to call me bad names? <laughs> yes, man. Come on. I always agree with you. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for calling. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for answering. All right. There, see, I answered, that, which which makes me a nice guy sometimes. That's not too bad. But, I mean, listen, your most important players are the guys they th- you think they are. I mean, this wasn't a trick question, and it's not trying to be a trick question. I just wanted you to think about the depth the Galaxy have and where that depth is. Galaxy are stacked at center back, actually stacked at left back. They have two or three guys who can play right back. That's good. Perry Kitchen has Servando Carrasco. Cool. Bajo Husidic, yep, he's there too. Um, you know, so so you have those guys. Uh, you know, y- you go with Jonathan Dos Santos. Now, who plays that role? Probably Baggio, probably fits in there. Could Perry Kitchen move forward? Maybe. Could S- Servando Carrasco give you a more defensive if you pair him up with Perry Kitchen? Probably. Jonathan Dos Santos probably doesn't have a lot of depth there. That's probably one of those areas that maybe you could make an argument for being one of the most important players on the team. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Who else? Who else could we go to? I mean... Left wing, you got Leggett. Allison Drini technically can play over there. Um, Boateng, you have Jamison can probably play over there, although maybe he's better on the right. Jamison can play up top. The biggest drop off for me is still Ola Kamara. You have a proven goal scorer. I think the guy who scored the mo- like third most goals in the last two years, um, and he's the one who really, if they if they lose him, that there's a drop off, which. Might be a good reason for bringing in Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Certainly a horrible reason to bring in Pato. And and I, by the way, I paid attention to all of you in that Facebook group who made me check with the LA Galaxy again about Pato. I I hate you so much. Okay, yeah, I don't even I don't even like texting the name anymore to the LA Galaxy. I'm like, what 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 is the what is the deal with this dude? Why is he why is he doing this? All right. All right, last chance for calls. I, I feel I feel like I just uh, I just missed one. So if you have one more call, we could probably get it in there. Otherwise, I do want to transition uh, for the last seven minutes and talk about some things that are coming up for the LA Galaxy. Oh, perfect. All right, here we go. Uh, one more call. Uh, let's go ahead and bring it in. Four two four. Who's this? Hey, Josh. It's Chris again. Chris, just trying to give my uh, two cents on this. All right, what do you got? Okay. Most important player, a lot of people might not agree with this one, but I'm going to go ahead and say Legit, and here are my reasons. Okay. Okay. Legit is like the jack of all trades right now on the team. Mm -hmm. His early days with West Ham, he was playing as a cam. He was playing as that creative center attacking midfield player, and granted he didn't play very much with the first team, but that's kind of what they were training him for. And we've seen glimpses of that. When Leggett has played, he, he can create, he can dribble, he can take on players, he's got the center of balance, he can play in the midfield, he can play out wide, he can play in the middle, up top. So aside from what he can do on the field and what he can bring to the team on the field, off the field, Leggett, I think they're billing him as the face of L.A. right now. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, I mean, he's a very handsome guy, I'm not going to lie. Uh, he's charismatic. He has that social media presence. Um, he's got the famous girlfriend, the pop star girlfriend. So going forward, I can see why they, they're putting him on the billboards. He's going to be important. Um, you know, he's a guy that can 
change games like we saw on Saturday. He came on and he delivered that pass on a silver platter. You know, so, and I believe that when he's healthy, he will be consistent. He's young. He still has a high ceiling. So, important player, legit. I, I like it. I, I don't. I, no, no, I don't hate it at all. And 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 thank you for the call. I appreciate it. Um, no, I don't hate it at all. Um, and I think there's a lot of us, a lot of reporters, a lot of coaches. Uh, even Bruce Arena said it after the U.S. Men's National Team uh, got knocked out. That losing Sebastian Legette for them was, uh, you know, was a blow for the U.S. Men's National Team as well as the LA Galaxy. Um, that was a huge blow for 2018. Probably things are a little bit better if Sebastian Legett is still on the field in 2018. Does it fix all the problems? No, it doesn't. Um, but I, I don't disagree. In terms of most important, yeah. And here's the deal. You can almost make an argument for any player to be the most important, right? And and the reason that you can make that argument is that is that you can you can define the criteria by which you want to judge these guys. And Sebastian Legette is a hugely important piece to the LA Galaxy. Um, and he probably will continue to be uh, a huge piece for the LA Galaxy going in 2018. So it's not a horrible, horrible idea. I, I don't hate it at all. So there you go. So those were all of our, you know, there's different answers. Like I said, you're, you're all good in my book, and I appreciate everybody calling in. All right, let's get to some of the housekeeping issues for Corner of the Galaxy and some stuff that's a little more exciting for me. Um... Right now, and a lot of you have already bought some, and I appreciate it, but I need you to go out and continue to uh, to do this. This is how we make any of the money that we make uh, is, is off of some of our uh, merchandise stuff. So what we have for you right now is the 2018 COG logo shirt. This logo shirt comes with five stars. There's no LA Galaxy jersey that has five stars. All right, They robbed you. They put one big star in the center, and they said, here, count that one as five. All right? No, that's not what we're going to do. All right, that's not how we roll here at Corner of the Galaxy. I designed a shirt, and yes, I designed it. I designed a shirt with five stars on it for you. All right, and the date 2018, so that way everybody knows that you are a listener of Corner of the Galaxy on tw- uh, during the 2018 season. All right, and we might have another shirt that comes out in the summer, but for right now, this is it. Okay, and it comes in five wonderful colors. Uh, my favorite being the pink, and yes, I did order the pink, and yes, I will be wearing the pink. Um, so that is great. There's also navy blue. There's a, there's a, like a dark uh, charcoal black color. Uh, there's a light gray, and there's a white. So all those things look great. $20. Listen, I don't make that much money off of them. I'm not gouging you. I think I make about like five bucks off of each shirt whenever all set is done. So that's, that's great for me. I love it. But go out there. Go to bonfire.com forward slash 2018. Actually, you know what? Just go to bonfire.com and type in COG logo shirt, and it should take you right there. Or you can, you know, hit me up on Twitter or Facebook, and I will link you there or on Instagram. And I think I put everything in there for you to be able to find it, right? So do that right away. Uh, get that. We have until February 21st. That is when orders shut down. So you have about two weeks left, a little less than two weeks. Um, and then the orders themselves should be shipping out around March 1st or so. Probably won't make it in time for the first game, but we'll do a meetup at one point. You can all wear your shirts and have a great time. So please buy our uh, Corner of the Galaxy t-shirts. Por favor. I would, I would appreciate it. All right. The second thing... And maybe the little more exciting thing, at least the little more exciting thing in the in the general sense of the things that are happening right now is that, as we have mentioned many, many, many times, uh, Corner of the Galaxy will host an open house on February 17th, 2018. That's from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, I've given you the address. If you want to know details, go to our Facebook page, or you can even go to cornerofthegalaxy.com. I have an article up there right now with all the things that are going to be happening. I am happy to announce... And I don't know how we landed him. Uh, he is a superstar uh, beyond all superstars in the LA Galaxy world. Uh, he is a he is a person of, uh, I guess I should say, an alien of very few words. Cosmo will be coming to the corner of the Galaxy open house uh, again. This is before the LA Galaxy hosts the San Jose Earthquakes at the Orange County Great Park on February seventeenth. That game is at two p.m. We are wrapping up a little bit, probably a little bit after twelve, but I'm going from nine a.m. to twelve. We're going to have a Q&A session which, uh, with our Corner of the Galaxy hosts and possibly some special guests. We'll see if that all pans out. You can get autographs from the COG staff. Why you would do that, I don't know. You can meet the COG team. You can tour the COG studio. Listen, it's my office. You get to see my office. You can sit in the chair. You can take pictures. You can pretend you're me. We'll turn on the music. It'll be fun. It'll be a great time. Uh, we're going to have drinks. Uh, some some snacks available as well. So all that stuff is there. We'll be raffling off a signed jersey. All of that, all of the stuff that is is there that in turn in includes all of the extra stuff that we have lying around that we're going to actually 
um, auction off. All that extra stuff um, is actually going to go to benefit the Galaxy Foundation. The only thing that's going to benefit us is the sale of our scarves. And I got a sample today. I saw them. They are supposed to, God willing, clothe, you, you need to cross your fingers, um, cross your toes, cross whatever you can. But cross your fingers, do something. Pray to whatever God or, or deity that you do that those scarves get here in time for that. Because I really hope that they are. Uh, right now, it's going to be very, very close. So we'll see if that goes, if that all happens, all right? Um, but we will be selling those COG scarves at that event for the very first time if you're interested. $25 will be the cost for those scarves. They cost me a small fortune, but I think you guys are going to love them. Love them. I love them already. It's our first COG scarf. You have to get one. I only have 75. 75. That's it. We'll order more if you guys go through those 75, all right? So 25 bucks. Get you a scarf. They are high quality. These are not crappy scarves. I will say again, these are not crappy scarves. All right? Good. I'm glad everybody is there. All right. I can see that our hour is up, and that's okay. I think we did a pretty good job. Um, I hope to see everybody at the Corner of the Galaxy open house. Again, go to cornerofthegalaxy.com for all the details on that. Um, you know, let me know you're coming on Twitter or on Facebook. You don't have to RSVP. I just sort of like to get an idea. Um, if 200 people show up, I have a feeling we're going to be in trouble. But if, if the seven or eight people who I imagine are coming are coming, then we're going to be fine. No problems. Uh, but we'll be glad to see you here. And, uh, uh Wendy's supposed to be here. Jared's supposed to be here. Kevin tech is supposed to be here. We'll see. He might actually have to go cover, uh, a former LA Galaxy player playing down in Liga MX that day, but for right now, he is planning on coming, so all of those things are there, all right? That's what we have planned in the Corner of the Galaxy open house. It's the first time we've ever done this, but you can see this wonderful studio that is around me um, that I worked very hard in the offseason to sort of redo and redecorate. You will be able to see that in all of its glory. All right, that's it. I'm done. I don't want to talk anymore. You don't want to hear me talk anymore. All we want to know is that the LA Galaxy will be playing on Saturday, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Live soccer in front of your face. You can smell the grass. You can, you can hear the sounds of the stadium. You can endure the parking once again. And all of those things are leading up to the LA Galaxy's very first game of the 2018 MLS season. So all those things coming very, very quickly. Again, just uh, 24 days. Did I get that? Yeah, 24 days until the LA Galaxy play. It's all coming together, boys and girls. It's all starting. All right. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else? No, that's it. Uh, if you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at jguessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N, and of course, at Galaxy Podcast. Head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com for all of our podcasts, all of our written articles, and all of our fun coverage of the LA Galaxy that we can possibly provide you, and that includes the details on our Corner of the Galaxy open house and those t-shirts for sale. Find them. Order them, please. All right. Uh, I think that about does it. If anybody has, doesn't have anything else for me, I'm out of here. We'll see you on Saturday. Please say hi to me. I'm lonely. You're my only friends. All right, I'm Josh Gessman. You've been listening to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Everyone have a very, very good time on Saturday. See you there. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. And for all of your independent LA Galaxy news, discussion, and entertainment, including this podcast, head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com. Fans, thanks for listening. We ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Arajo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.